Hello, welcome to Resale Coder. In this tutorial, we're gonna add easy, medium, and hard difficulties for the AI. Before we do that though, let's fix my horrible grammar. In the previous part, I made an awful mistake when I misspelled I resettable. To fix this typo, let's go to scripts, types, now click slowly two times on I resettable, and we wanna repair the grammar, and now let's double click on this, and let's change it even here so I resettable with the proper grammar and press control dot and we want to rename I resettable to I reset double. All right, and now we are good to go. Now let's get to the main part of this tutorial and that is to add easy, medium and hard selector for the difficulty of the AI. In order to be able to select the difficulty for the AI, we need to have some kind of toggles. So let's click here on canvas. Now right click on canvas and we want to add UI and panel. It should be aligned to the bottom just like this. The position Y is going to be 250 and the height should be 300. As you can see down here, this is the region where the difficulty toggles will be positioned. We can now remove this component of image. We don't need it anymore. And let's add a toggle group. So toggle group. This is here because we want to be able to select only one difficulty at a time. It doesn't make sense to have easy and medium difficulties turned on simultaneously. And let's also add an horizontal layout group. So add component horizontal layout group. It should control child size both width and height. And the child alignment will be middle center. Spacing between the children should be 10. And let's rename this panel to difficulty toggles. Alrighty, and now let's add an easy toggle. So right click, UI toggle. If it happens to be off center like this, just disable it and then re enable it. And as you can see here, it jumped right back to the center. Alright, now click on the toggle. We can delete this check mark and let's rename this background to off background. And this should stretch. And right is gonna be zero and also bottom will be zero. And we can already see these changes down here. Now select this off background, duplicate it by pressing Ctrl D, put it one step up. This will be called on background and this image will have a green color. So something like this should be all right. And also there are some strange values in these fields because of the duplicating. So let's click on this gear icon and click on reset position and reset scale. Now let's go to this label and change the name to text just for brevity. We are gonna set all of these position fields to zero. The font should be our beloved M plus 1M medium and the font size will be 100. It will align to the center both horizontally and vertically. And believe it or not, this will say easy. We also wanna add an overlay image. So let's click on this on background and press Ctrl D to duplicate it. It will be called overlay. Let's reset the position and also the scale. It will have a plain white color. And this is here just for the animation when the click happens. You know, when you click a button, it goes a bit darker. This is what this overlay will be used for. Now let's go back to the toggle. This target graphic will be overlay. By default, the overlay should be turned off. So the normal color will be completely transparent. The highlighted color will be a bit less transparent. And the pressed color will be even less transparent. It will not be on by default and we will handle that in the script. And the graphic will be on background. We want to turn this on and off when the toggle is on or off. And the toggle group for this toggle is located on the difficulty toggles. And now we want to duplicate this toggle two times. And as you can see, the horizontal layout group spares us from the work of laying it out manually. Let's rename these toggles to easy toggle, medium toggle and hard toggle. And let's also change the text. So this will say easy as it says now. The medium toggle should say obviously medium. And the hard toggle will say hard. But let's offset these toggles a bit. So let's go to difficulty toggles, padding. And this should have padding 50 from the left and also 50 from the right. All right, awesome. Now when we turn the game on, we can select between easy, medium and hard. But currently this does absolutely nothing. So let's go coding. First up, we want to edit game value script. So go to scripts and game values. And here we want to create the public enum difficulties. And the difficulties are easy, medium and hard. And in addition to the public static bool is multiplayer, we want to have public static difficulties, difficulty. And by default, this will be set to the easy difficulty. So equals difficulties dot easy. 
Now let's go to menu scene, menu manager. We want to add a public field of type game object. It will be called difficulty toggles. And this will reference to the object which groups all of the difficulty toggles together. And before I forget, let's go to unity editor, find scene manager, and let's drag difficulty toggles over here. We want the difficulty toggles to only display when the multiplayer is not turned on. After all, it doesn't make sense to select the difficulty for the AI if you are not gonna be playing with the AI. To be able to tell if the multiplayer is on or off, we need to listen to the on value change event on multiplayer toggle. So in the void start, multiplayer toggle, dot on value changed, dot add listener, and here we wanna write a lambda expression, is multiplayer on? And for all intents and purposes, this is multiplayer on could be totally named X, but I think the name is multiplayer on better describes what it does. Now equal and greater sign, and we want to set the difficulty toggles game object active, so difficulty toggles dot set active, and let's put this whole thing on another line. So set active not is multiplayer on. This makes sure that when the multiplayer is not on, which means it's turned off, the difficulty toggles are gonna be displayed. Alright, and at the start of the game, we wanna turn on the easy difficulty. So difficulty toggles dot transform. We wanna get a child, so get child, add the index of game values dot difficulty. This is the enum containing the current difficulty. And as you may remember, we've set this difficulty to be equal to easy by default right here. But there is a problem. This difficulty field is an enum and we need to pass an integer into this method. For that, we can use casting, so two parentheses and int. And now this enum will be converted back to int. And on this child, we want to get a component, so get component of type toggle. And we want to turn it on, so dot is on is equal to true. Now let's scroll all the way down. Let's create the region difficulty and inside here we are gonna have the methods which are gonna be called by the toggles. So public void set easy difficulty, it's gonna accept a boolean argument is on and if is on we wanna set the difficulty to be easy. So game values dot difficulty is equal to game values dot difficulties dot easy. Now we can copy this method, paste it two times, this will be set medium difficulty, so we wanna set it to medium. And this will set the difficulty to be hard, just like this. And this easy toggle will call a method. It's on the game object scene manager, on the script menu manager. And we want to select this dynamic bool set easy difficulty. We want to do the same thing with medium toggle and hard toggle, just change the difficulty. All right, now let's test it. So the easy difficulty is turned on by default. We can select the medium difficulty. And now let's turn the multiplayer on and the difficulties are gonna disappear. When we turn it off, the difficulties are gonna reappear and the medium difficulty is still turned on. And this is absolutely cool. But even now, these difficulties are not doing anything useful. For that, we need to change the AI script. So let's go to scripts, main scene, AI script, and at the bottom of the start method, let's add a switch statement. We wanna switch on game values dot difficulty and case the difficulty is easy, we want to set max movement speed to be equal to 10. If it's medium, we want to set it to 15. And finally, if it's hard, we want to set it to 20. And by the way, 20 is the current value for max movement speed. That kind of explains why I had difficulties playing with the AI in the previous tutorials. And also there is another explanation and that is that I just plain suck at air hockey, but obviously that is just not true, so we can safely ignore it, I guess. Alright, now let's go back to Unity, play the game, let's first play multiplayer, so no AI is involved and I can safely win this game. Now let's go to the menu, turn the multiplayer off and let's select hard difficulty, so it will be as hard as before. Now hit play and when we click on this main, player blue, which is our AI, you can see here that the max movement speed is set to 20. Alright, I am gonna lose this game. And let's set the difficulty to easy, play it again, and you can immediately see that the AI is just moving much slower. We can even check it, and player blue has max movement speed of 10. But yeah, these are the basics of implementing a difficulty system inside your game. And congratulations, you've just completed this tutorial series and now you know the basics of creating a 2D game in Unity.
Over the past 11 parts you learned how to work with physics, how to write scripts and create custom types, you also created an artificial intelligence, implemented multi-touch multiplayer, made a simple UI and much, much more. That's a lot of work and I hope that this series made you a better developer. Do you want to finally find a good calculator for your Android smartphone? Download OneCalc, the simple scientific calculator made with you in mind. Customize it to your liking, choose from lots of beautiful material themes and most importantly, save time. Be efficient, use OneCalc. Get it on Google Play from the link in the description. Thanks for watching these tutorials and for withstanding my damn awesome jokes. We are not ending this completely though, there's still one part left, publishing the game on Google Play. There's no point in making a game if nobody's gonna see it, right? Thanks for watching this tutorial and if it helped you, please give this video a like and also share it. If you wanna get the code from this tutorial, click on the link in the description which is gonna take you to resocoder.com. If you have anything to say, leave a comment, follow me on social media and see you in the next video.